a generation perished in Abavan. In a few minutes, nearly 200 children, happy because they would begin a holiday that afternoon, were engulfed. And for them, there was no holiday, no half term. It was to be their final term. On the site of the landslide, the task of rescue operated with speed. It looked impossible, it looked hopeless. But these men are miners. Their children were buried in that mud. Mud almost filled the classrooms. With shovels, if necessary, with bare hands, they pitted themselves against the uncounted tons of slimy filth, the waste product of coal mining. Perhaps their little sons and daughters might still be alive. The school lay in the direct path of the disintegrating man-made mountain. Faced with calamity, the South Wales miners volunteered help to a man. Then came the command, stop and listen. Someone had thought he heard the cry of a child. Too often the cries had only been in the imagination of the men who worked. At 7.30 that morning, a man on the tip warned that a slide might be imminent. An hour and a half later, the children went to school. If fate had stayed its hand a few more hours, those little children would not be dead. Perhaps a brother or a sister might yet be saved. Many times in these Welsh valleys, the price of coal has been paid in human life. Yet there has never been anything to compare with Abavan. Here, death struck above ground, giving the surface the semblance of a mine as the slurry mountain overwhelmed the school. This time, too, most of the dead were children, dying entombed as men have died so often in the mine. The early dark of autumn came, and through the long hours they worked on. Smoke rose from the slag heap, set burning by fires in the ruined houses. Many of the men worked around the clock while there was still hope that some of the buried children might be reached alive. These men would have gone on digging, even without lights. Some of them, perhaps, have dug in total darkness in rescue operations underground, urged by deep Welsh humanity and a sense of community common to miners everywhere. Here they were spurred even more. Their own children were still in peril if they breathed at all. Religious emotion is a great power in Wales. Was this a punishment unto the third and fourth generation? Illogical, perhaps. But in the face of agonizing disaster, the heart, not logic, is the guide. Fate surely should have spared the children. Next day, the people of Abavan saw things more clearly. The shock and horror of the first impact had urged them to heroic efforts, but at the same time partly dulled their grief. It came back now. The full tragedy was evident on every side. Families of but a few hours ago did not exist, robbed of the children in whom they put so much hope, whom they had cherished. In the valleys of South Wales, calamities have punctuated the century of coal mining. Many a sudden explosion underground has sentenced whole villages to a lifetime's bereavement. Lord Snowden's Welsh sympathies were deeply stirred as he moved about the stricken village. The 
Duke of Edinburgh, though inured to death and suffering in the war, was much moved. This is peace, and the welfare of children and youth have always been dear to his heart. He said he had seen nothing to compare with this. By this time, there could be little hope for most of those who are still missing. Suffer the little children. With new meaning, how those words haunted the senses now. Can it be that their sacrifice, their suffering had to be, to claim the attention of the whole country to the plight of miners and the mining industry? Perhaps in the light of this tragedy, we shall remember them. They must not be forgotten men. Their work goes on. Tragedy can halt, not stop it, at mines economically working. Before the war, old men remembered these valleys, green and lovely, the rolling hillsides unravaged and unscarred. Soon, men learnt that beauty and mining cannot live side by side. Having served Britain so well, the miners must not be left unemployed as in the pre-war slum. There must be help, not only for Aberfan, but all who toil to win coal. 